Hi. So I hope now it's uh, it's clear, and the position of the camera is okay. So now does it look okay? The sound is good. <laughs> okay. Wonderful, wonderful. So uh, good to see you, everybody. So I am here in uh, Kathmandu, Nepal, and uh, so uh, hopefully the internet will continuously stay okay. How everybody's doing? Wonderful, wonderful. Well, uh, so this has uh, um, been a little bit challenging for me to try to do regularly uh, with the specific dates on the Facebook Live because uh, since I've been traveling quite a bit and uh, oh, most of it for family and I've been uh, spent whole most of the month of November and December and uh, with the family and with the Singe. So now he on uh, winter, two months winter vacation. So a uh, uh, month and a half without no, not any teaching programs. Uh, I'm spending time with him and we are doing some traveling together. So, so when traveling in Asia, um, not knowing where we're going to stay, not knowing the internet connection. So it's been a little bit challenging to make specific uh, dates and times to announce. So, so we have to be a little bit more flexible with the, in terms of the when I can teach something. And, uh, but anyway, so our main thing is this, this is a continuation of PIT instruction. It's a little more like a personal reflection on Dzogchen teachings. And uh, particularly, it's about three doors. Um, the door of the body, door of the speech, door of the mind. So basically, these three door being uh, the main principle access to our inner essence, our inner potentiality. And it's also like an exit to from our source, getting lost into samsara and pain. So, so therefore, these three doors are very important. So, so the, there are three uh, topics, titles that I'm going to teach next couple of weeks. I don't. So today will be the first one, and uh, next two, I'm not sure when it will be, but we will always make announce few days before. Uh, so first one is uh, discovering the dance of stillness. Discovering the dance of stillness. So as we all know, the stillness is a very important uh, part of our practice to enter into accessing our true nature. And the second one is the finding the melody of the silence. So finding the melody in silence. Um, so that is the second door, door of the speech. And the third is embracing the warmth of the spaciousness. So reason why these three doors are very important in some sense that usually when we think about um, stillness, we think about not moving, not doing, not manifesting, not not accomplishing, not developing, somehow the idea, some sense of being frozen stillness, but that's not the case. And the true sense of stillness is the full mastering in movement, uh, mastering in, uh, in development, manifestation, creativity. So that is the true uh, realization of uh, stillness. In the same way, when we think about silence, we always think about absence of noises. 
everything about it's being very quiet, not making sound, not talking. But uh, in in essence, um, the 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 realization of the silence is where when one is able to fully manifest communication, sound, singing, uh, the qualities in silence, uh, the light in the silence, the joy in the silence, and uh, the peace, sense of peacefulness in the silence. So the silence being um, a perfected space, a perfected place, of all the sounds and languages and qualities. So basically, so the sound is not just absence of sound, but it's a, like a melody, it's like a music. Uh, so I think that's kind of very, very important because sometimes uh, the people who are doing meditation for a long time, uh, just being very still, then they become very stiff they become very rigid, they become very tense. So that sense of resting fully in the nature of mind, it becomes too far for them because they're, because they're trying to be still, but with a very deep sense of rigidity. So, and then the third part is embracing the warmth of the spaciousness is because also sometimes when we're trying to um, not think when we're trying to stay open and so sometimes it also becomes a kind of very rigid and cold and close and blocked and not feeling sense of warmth so the idea here is to feel the warmth in spaciousness feel the melody in the silence and feel the as I say feel or experience quality of dancing in the stillness. So these are three uh, main topics that I am going to uh, speak in the next couple of weeks. So today, the first one is, is the discovering the dance, discovering the dance of stillness. So talking about the discovering the dance of stillness, let's, let's repeat again a little bit. The idea of being very still So as I'm speaking right now, I want all of you to feel still, to bring awareness in you, awareness in your body, awareness of the stillness in your body. So in this stillness, you might feel some sense of rigidity, stiffness. But if you're aware of that, if you're trying to allow it to go, uh, breathe it out, rest deeper, and then in that stillness, there is a sense of movement. So there is a sense of a dance. So just trying to kind of connect with that a little bit. So, uh, so in our everyday life, I think mo most of the time uh, we get, we are, how you say, we are lost, we lose the connection to the source because of our action. So the idea of stillness is all our action is the opposite. <clears throat> our actions are driven by duality, um, driven by conditions, driven by pain, and uh, driven by confusions, driven by fear, but they, don't, they are not arising spontaneous uh, manifestations. So they are uh, driven because of our disconnectedness to the source. They are driven because we are lost in actions. Uh, we are driven because of our pain. So some sense 
our actions in our life, they are like causes of losing the connection to the stillness. So I think, so this is something that I think is important that each one of us uh, looking in our own life very closely, if you look at your own life very closely, what does that mean? What does the word stillness mean to you? What is uh, the awareness of the body means to you? What is what does awareness of the stillness in your body means to you? Uh, what does the actions in your life? Uh, um, just uh, either it's really professional, that's something that you have to do or you like to do or you, you are driven to do or, or you are addicted to do. Um, so whatever those actions are, where these actions are coming from, uh, do, does these action causes you to lose the connection to the source and the stillness? Or does these actions are like dances of the stillness and connection to the source? So this is a question that each one of us can ask to ourselves. So there are a few, I think maybe there are three important points that I want everybody to reflect. And the number one is in order, in, in, in relation to the dance of the stillness. And the number one is rec recognition of actions of so basically, everything you do. So just think about in your life, everything that you do. Today, this week, this month, this year, everything that you have been doing, how many of these doing actions are created by pain, confusion, duality, addictions? How many of them? So this is each one of you look. Everything that you do in your life, including your spiritual practices, including your social services, including your profession, including your sense of trying to help your families, help anybody. So how many of these actions are driven from the disconnectedness Driven from the pain, duality, fear. And then these actions are not the dance of the stillness. These actions are the, the manifestation of disconnectedness. The dance of the stillness will be, you, you might be, doing any of these things, professions, your professions are like a dance of the stillness. Your social services are like a dance of the stillness. Your, all your actions, particularly of your body, things that you do, are dance of the stillness when they are connected to the source. So are your actions are dance of the stillness, uh, your actions are connected to, to the source and the stillness. So that's the good question. So just I want everybody to reflect that a little bit for a moment. Right now or afterward, but just, just reflect that moment. When you begin to realize there are many of them are connect, you have many of the actions are not really the dance of the stillness. They are manifestation of duality, fear, confusion, addiction, patterns, unconscious patterns. If you look at these actions, 
But how many of these actions are creating more pains, more stress, more tensions, more disconnectedness? They're draining your battery. You're losing your energy because of these lost action you are lost in action, the actions of fear, actions of unconscious. So how many of these actions, when you realize they are not the dance of the stillness, but they are manifestation of duality, then look, look at the, some of them, consequences of that. They are not, they're not making you achieve what you wanted to achieve. They are not necessarily being very creative. You are not able to being very creative in sense of what you do. You are not necessarily able to accomplish so much what you are trying to do. So maybe you are doing a lot but not necessarily accomplishing. You are doing a lot, lot but not necessarily very creative. You are doing a lot, but you are not achieving much. Because all the things what you are doing, they are not the dance of the stillness. They are manifestation of duality, lost in action, lost in pain. Actions which is lost in pain. So just realize that. As you, as you reflect in your life, this is, I'm not talking about anybody, I'm not talking about, you know, somebody else. I'm talking about to, to discuss these things so that we can reflect in our own life. It, it is always about oneself, it's not about um, referencing to somebody else. So I'm, as a teacher here, as a speaker here, I'm, I'm encouraging all of you to reflect in your own life in terms of your own actions, everything that you do, including your meditation, including your dharmic, karma, dharmic work, including your trying to help your family. They can be very draining, very stressful, disconnecting, not necessarily accomplishing what you wish to accomplish because the way it is coming from, where it is coming from. So if you realize that, so the second point is, if you realize that how many, many of them is absolutely not necessary. This is a very important point. During this last winter retreat in Serenity Ridge, I encourage, of course, first of all, within myself and to people who are attending to the retreat, uh, I encourage everybody, this 2018, reduce actions, at least 5%. So I'm in, I increase the number here, 5 to 10%. Minimum 5%, you can go, there's no maximum, but at least between 5 to 10%, more connection to the stillness in 2018. Obviously, a form, informal meditation, but more importantly, in informal lifestyle, less actions. But that not necessarily means that you will be less creative, less accomplishing. No, you will definitely be more creative, more restful, and accomplish more because your actions are more like the dances of the stillness. They are coming from the connection to the source. They are coming because it's like uh, you're using your phone while you're charging, the, charging it rather than using the phone while it's not charging it. It's losing its energy. So, so that's important. So what I'm encouraging everybody, those you are listening here, is in your life, in this 2018, reduce at least 
5% of dualistic, fearful, pain actions. Basically, when you, you just recognize, this is, this is what I am saying is important. In the first case, reflect and recognize. And when you see enough, when you realize enough, that is necessary to reduce actions, be more still and connected to them or to the source, then 5% is your number, at least. And then, then the third part is I want all of you to look, reflect on benefit of reducing 5 to 10% of your fearful, pain, confusing, driven, unconscious, negative actions. And even sometimes actions are positive, but it's coming from disconnectedness. So it still becomes a little more like a negative because it's outcome. It looks like a, you're trying to love, but then love becomes hate. It's, it's, it's like you're trying to like at rest, but the rest becomes stressful. It's, it's like you're trying to connect, but then you end up disconnecting. So in some sense, end outcome of your actions becomes negative. So that's why reducing is helpful. So what do you do? How, how you would do? So basically, think about kind of commitments that you make with people. Not get overly enthusiastic about things. Unrealistic enthusiasm. Promises. Every time you feel enthusiastic, promises, just settle down, relax, reflect, think carefully, and then say yes, no, with some sense of clarity. So then in, in those reflections, you might find more time to realize there are a lot of actions absolutely not necessary in those absence of those actions, you can rest more, recover more, heal more, be more creative, connected to the source, feel the dance of the stillness, manifest those dances in your life. So that, that's, that is important. Let me give, I always give example of phone, so let me give some examples of phone. So, what, are, what is the best way to preserve the, uh, the lifespan of your phone, smartphone, or particularly, what is the best way to preserve your battery lifespan? It's like your life. Your life has certain amount of battery, energy, biological energy, psychological energy, spiritual energy. Some people have a little more, some people have a little less, but there's always a limit there. And the, those limited biological, psychological resources can only be preserved when you know how to preserve them well. Otherwise, all these dualistic, painful, negative, lost in actions, these actions, these actions will cause to lose it more. And the stillness will help to preserve more. So I'll give some examples. For example, usually in the smartphone, what we do, we, we erase all and restart the phone. Like even if it's an old phone, sometimes you erase everything, you restart everything, and make sure when you restart, not having too many stuff in it, right? So it's like a totally recovering. Or every now and then, when the phone is not working, 
you have to shut it down and turn it off, on. So shutting down is kind of way of being still, a way of entering into that emptiness. Shutting down all the thoughts, emotions, afflictions, recollections, senses, shutting down everything. So then when you restart it and you see it clearer, feel it clear, clearer, um, understand it clearer, everything works more with clarity. Or what we also do is we delete files, we delete photos, videos, junk mails. That deleting is is basically like a purification practice. In many cultural, there is a practice called purification practice, basically purifying, clearing, exhausting, releasing. So, so basically, you're deleting files. And then when you delete file, if you, if you have less memory, if you delete like 1,000 photos or something like that, or videos like that, immediately phone will function differently. So those all are like actions, actions unnecessary, ocup space occupying, um, you're clearing them, so basically. Or deleting the apps, because uh, I was just looking at it, it says that uh, when you have apps, many apps, which unfortunately I do, that's one of my practice to work is to try to clear the apps on my phone, is that these apps in the settings, if you have like automatic update, upgrade, how you say, update, so you're not aware of it, but it's whenever it's the internet is connected to the internet, it updates. Maybe you don't want need to update, but it automatically updates. So all these apps are somehow um, in actions. It's doing something. Maybe it's, it's doing something that you don't necessarily need or you want, but without your being aware, it's doing something. As a result of that, it's draining your battery or phone. There are so many unconscious things in our, in our, in our self, our wounded pains, thoughts, ideas. It's in actions in our, us, but we are not necessarily conscious of them. They interfere our sleeps. They interfere our restfulness. They they interfere our deep meditation. They interfere the flow of our life. So so there are many apps in the smartphone you need to delete, which you are not using because you can and you can get them. Enter them anytime without the app. You can get 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 how you say get it. Uh, have access to it. In the same way, if you're connected to the your source, you if you're connected to the your source, you know your your how to connect to the your source in a refuge. Then you can always access those qualities without having spe specific practices or complicated practices or complicated app applications to access those qualities. So basically, what I'm saying, deleting unnecessary apps, files, shutting down sometime, restarting sometime. As we do in, in our smartphone, we, do, we need to do that in our self exactly the same. The three, last three important things that what, what drains the battery most in the smartphone and what drains the lifespan most in our life, in our life, is these three things. One is in the smartphone, the Wi-Fi, uh, wi right? Searching for connection. So the moment when you, in a, in a, in a phone, when you press the Wi-Fi, it's immediately a searching a connection. A search connection. But when you sometimes you choose 
to to search to connection sometimes you are painfully fearfully confusingly driven to choose those actions you don't choose necessary actions so the wi-fi is reason why it drains so much because it's searching our problem is we're searching our our really problem is we are still searching our ultimate problem is probably we will never find it in the Dzogchen teaching it says you will never find it because you have never lost it something that you haven't lost it there's nothing to find but if you you can still keep looking the looking process of looking searching is it's a draining draining thing it's a, it, this is what drains drains the life span biological psychological energies are dra drained because of search search so that's why the wire fire is it says if you wanted to save your battery life turn off the wire fire when you're not using it if you wanted to save the uh, your phone turn off the navigation system sometime your navigation systems is on because that's another thing which drains a phone a lot in our life exactly the same thing in our life navigation system we are searching address or direction without knowing looking 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 without knowing what you're looking so are you are you searching everything what you're doing is is because you're searching for something do you expect to find something of course i know like sometimes it maybe it sounds like a little bit strange and funny but in fact i mean is i think iphone example is very very good and the phone smartphone is something that we have all the time with us and also we need, in order to save them save the the life span of the phone that these are the things that we need to pay attention wi-fi navigation system and bluetooth these three things are searching search engine which which drives drains the most and in our life are you what what you're searching where what what you where you're trying to connect where are you trying to go So so this is I think is very important that all of us here just kind of reflect a little bit about uh this 5 to 10% less action more stillness and uh it's not just a less actions but less action after realizing realizing that how many of your actions are pain driven lost in actions fear driven unconscious and not only that they do not achieve what you are wishing to achieve they bring opposite outcome so they are absolutely necessary is not even a luxury we do it just because we are addicted to do it we do it because we are not conscious doing it we do it because i don't know we just do it but when you bring when you bring a little bit more conscious more awareness naturally you feel more connection 
to that stillness. Naturally, you feel more connection to that movement, the dance of the stillness, the, the flow, the freedom, the, this, this sense of unblocked. So these are, the, these are some qualities that I, can, I could say that when, when, when you don't, when you're lost in actions, when you're lost in, in uh, dualistic uh, doing things, then what happens is many things what we do, for example, we do it because we're addicted to do it, because we, we think we have to do it, because we don't know why we're doing it. But what, we, what we're really feeling, we're feeling blockages. Like every morning people who go to the work, big, big percentage of people do not want to go to the job, their work. But they drag their self, themselves anyway. That's blockages. That's effort. There is no openness. There is a force. And when you go that way, then you feel like also restrictions. You don't feel a sense of freedom. You don't feel a sense of playfulness. You don't feel the sense of flow and joy. But you do it anyway. You do it anyway. You don't feel a sense of joking, laughing, humor. But these doings is the opposite of the dance flow because they are coming from these blockages, restrictions, lack of freedom, lack of playfulness, lack of humor, lost in actions and fears, but still their actions, still you are doing things in life. So going back, self-reflecting and recognizing how many of these doings are absolutely unnecessary. Not, not only is unnecessary, but they are affecting negatively you. You're doing something to be more happy, but you're becoming more sad. You're doing something to accomplish something, but you are not accomplishing. You're doing something to gain something, but you're losing something. You're doing something to connect with someone, but you are disconnecting with someone. You're doing something to be more happy, but you end up being more depressed. Because all those doing things are coming from the wrong space. Lack of connection to the source and the stillness in yourself. They are not the dance of the stillness. But when the dance of the stillness manifests, every doing is doing from freedom, joy, flow. Every doing is like a dance. There is not a sense of effort. It's like a, if you think about, it's like a Monday morning and Friday afternoon energy. So Friday afternoon, people say, oh, Friday afternoon, there is traffic. A Friday afternoon, everybody goes out. Friday afternoon, there is a lot of actions. But in some sense, these actions are more coming from space, joy, f energy, hope, playfulness, music, dance, connections. But people also say, oh, in the Monday morning, there's a lot of traffic. That's true. There's a lot of traffic. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of actions. 
but most of these actions are coming from blockages, restrictions, pains, obligations. It's not a dance. You dance Friday afternoon. Many people die Monday morning. More people die Monday morning than any other day or time of the week. It's not a dance. But Friday afternoon, it is a dance. It's a dance of the stillness. So, so let's uh, uh, do a short meditation. And uh, I hope that all of you are, are hearing me okay. Or at least making sense of what I'm trying to say here. So sit comfortably. Take deep breathings. And exhale all the still breath. Be aware of the stillness in your body. Bring the awareness in your body. Bring the awareness of the stillness in your body. And rest deep. At the same time, just reflect a little bit as earlier, as, uh, as I said, that in one's own life, I'm uh, singing is meditating here, so. So just reflect in your lives how many of the actions that is driven from the disconnectedness lost in actions, unconscious. The outcomes are negative. These actions are not producing what it meant to, but instead opposite. Recognize those kind of actions in life, in your life.
as you recognize for sure there is a more than 5% so just just some sense of feeling that i will i will in my life reduce 5 to 10% of these actions and enter 5 to 10% more into connection to myself my body into the stillness to connect to the source just feel that sense of awareness, commitment. Continue as I will uh, play the uh, music of Salve Mantra.
just feel this sense of support from the cyber sangha so we are all here to supporting each other i am sending my support and prayers to all of you and you sent your prayers support to everybody else and just feel that you're not alone this collective meditative power support feel that and connect with that for a moment okay so thank you very much um so how was the meditation some feedbacks are good so i will just randomly ask few questions so when you reflect reflect in your life how many actions that you take it's not necessary definitely there is a 5 to 10% that you can not do and bring more awareness in your body more connection to the stillness and not do at all not engage with those actions but not lose anything but gain more accomplish more be more creative more flow more charging your battery rather than losing your battery can you see that 5% are you committed to a 5 to 10% more stillness in 2018 and then to connect more with that flow inner flow that inner creative power that inner freedom that inner sense of home so not searching not turning on your bluetooth wifi navigation system but shutting it down and preserving the battery of your life but not necessarily means you're not you know not accomp i say not accomplishing more it's not like a retrieving from the world it's rather than, rather than engaging better with the world it's not disconnecting with the people it's connecting more with the people it's not doing just doing less it's accomplishing more so do you feel that that's so that's my question do you feel the actions that you do in your life it's like a dance it's like a joy it's like a play it's like a dynamic energy displaying it's like a effortless actions like a teenage going to the disneyland first time in life like doing something that you 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 love so much to do so then then there are like actions actions which is the dance of the stillness because they are like a dance they are movement they are manifestation they are creativity but they are coming from the stillness because they are connecting to the connected to the source 
Therefore, you don't drain by doing, but you gain energy by doing. Those kind of doing. So that is what is, I think, uh, what we are trying to communicate, at least according to the Dzogchen teaching. It's like, um, when we think about like a rest, resting, restfulness. So this is that restfulness in the stillness, restfulness in the body, connecting to the source, and there, therefore every doing becomes the dance of that stillness. So that is what we're trying to communicate. So I hope it is making sense. I hope this meditation was good. And so, uh, um, so I hope, you know, maybe not too late, able to do the next, next one, uh, the next Facebook Live sometime soon. So the finding the melody in silence. So it, it, we talked about action and stillness. So this is uh, dance. We talk now, next time we'll talk about the melody of the silence. Because many times when people don't talk or when people remain silent, uh, it's like a blockages, it's like effortful. So it, or, or it, it's like a dead, they don't, they don't feel anything. But instead, in silence, silence is lively. Silence is a light. A silence is a, a deep sense of peace. Silence is a joy. So silence is very active rather than very passive and dead. And that, that is how sometimes people experiencing experiences that. When they do that, silence does not help very much. It just becomes another dead space, effortful, draining meditation. Okay, so next time that's what we're going to talk. So thank you very much, and uh, I just wanted to let you know, Singhi was he's, he's just uh, meditating with us here during the meditation, and uh, and as, now since he's turned twelve, so we have been meditating every day, very short. So he's going from uh, five, six, seven minute meditation with the invocation of Taparitsa, but every day. So um, it's been uh, kind of nice to uh, start that, and I think he, he it's, it's, um, he's, he's saying it's difficult for him, but it, at least he's uh, happy to try. So thank you very much. Good night.